Hey everybody, welcome to the Fire It Up with CJ. Today we have Michael Goddard who is talking about his book, In Search of Lost Lives. Would you hold up your beautiful book? In Search of Lost Lives, Desire, Samskaras, and the Evolution of a Mind and Soul. So welcome, Michael. Thank you, CJ. Thank you for the introduction. So I, I want to find out a little bit about past lives. And for those that I, I think probably most of my listeners are familiar with it, but how would you describe what past lives are? Well, there, there are other physical lives that took, path, took place in another time entirely. Basically, we are mind and soul entities traveling through time on a soul journey mm -hmm. uh, to uh, participate in the creation. Right now we're on the physical plane. And for that, we need a physical body. Mm -hmm. So when you die, your mind and soul are withdrawn and you spend a certain amount of experience between lives in an inner, in an inner plane. <clears throat> Typically it's a sub-astral plane and then you take a new birth. The soul will enter the embryo at a certain time and then become active. I think after three months. Mm -hmm. Okay, so um, we never we never die. There's always some aspect of ourselves, and that's what you're calling soul and mind. Or well, well you... actually, soul soul is who we really are, and we are all a spark of the supreme being, the creator, what I like to call love force. And as we descended into more and more less subtle spiritual planes, we entered the mental spheres. And to operate in the mental spheres, we became associated with the mind. And so the mind basically has been what's helping us and getting us into trouble for eons. So we have a, we have a soul that um, is the spark of God or one with everything, um, our God-like selves um, that travels with us. It's like our, our, our soul from lifetime to lifetime accumulates information and lifetime learnings and continues over and over again. So there is no, it, it, there is, there is no, um, death really so much as rebirth over and over again to different it, your soul right. learns more and more. Yeah, I mean, you can think of each life as a play with various acts. Mm -hmm. And when it's over, it's over. Like, um, one of the things I recovered, well, I recovered a number of people in this life who came from past lives. Mm -hmm. But one of the most powerful ones was somebody uh, who was my brother when we were both orphaned in mm -hmm. Macedonia, mm -hmm. um, about, I believe, um, 600 uh, before the common era. Then the next life we had together was my second Christian life mm -hmm. when I was in Sweden, of all places. Mm -hmm. And there were just a handful of us worshiping because this monk had come up from uh, Europe and told us about Christianity. Mm. But the third time we were together was my last life in England. And he was like my great love that lifetime. All right. So, so you actually have a, you have a person which came as your brother... And then best your friend. best friend, and then as your spouse, Com yeah, or companion, companion of some sort. Companion. Wow, right. that's yeah. So then, isn't that interesting? So when when you've had these different types of relationships with the same soul in different kind of venues, um, when you explored that, what did you learn about your different incarnations with this person? Well, you you experience what you went through together. I mean, when I first met this person, it was sort of like firecrackers and lights were going off in my head. And I'm wondering if a number of our listeners have ever experienced it. Often you meet somebody and there's this immediate sense of familiarity and that can be a trigger to a past life. Mm -hmm. And I've, a number of people, uh, I, I've met in the gym. Well, before I met in the gym, it was sort of like my, I have a, a section of my book called Jumping into Old Friends. And mm -hmm. it describes in detail how it's happened where my mind has been like 
somersaulting into another person's mind, trying to make contact with them, actually trying to remember who is this person? I know this game, where do I know them? And that's a great section to read because it may trigger your own memories of that. And I, I don't know, I'm fairly sensitive mentally, but it happens often in the gym because you, don't, you, you see people for a long time before you- You mean like literally them. in the gym where you work out? Yes, yes. Okay. No, I can remember um, and when I was living in Santa Rosa, I was working in the gym and all of a sudden someone was working across from me and it's like, my mind was blown. It's like, who is this person? I know them. And so we eventually met and I became friends with his partner and we're sort of in the same circle. But then, you know, a, a few months into my recovery, I was in Hawaii and I kept hearing this phrase in my mind, cohort of seven, cohort of seven. And I thought, what does that mean? And I explored it. And what it was, was my cohort of seven was a whole group of beings. Oh, that is my, um, there we go. Sorry, I, I put it away. Mm -hmm. Okay, got it. So that's, you said the cohort of seven and you said, and that is what I, um, so this cohort of seven, can you tell me a little bit about what, who they are and how you work with them? Yeah, what the cohort of seven was, was this group of mind, spirit, uh, entities who came together. We were like in a classroom together. Mm -hmm. We were journeying together. We have had many multiple- In this physical life, or are you going to a cohort this of seven? Be, I'm, yeah, this is between lives, uh, actually. Okay. It's between lives. So we would complete lives, and then we'd gather together and review our lives and learn lessons together. Okay. What, what was so uncanny is that in this current lifetime, and two lives ago, when I was a British banker in England, I knew all, all of us were present physically at the same time. Mm. So this group of minds and souls, I've had the most slides with. Mm. I mean, typically if somebody's really familiar, maybe I've had two or three lives, but with this group of people, I've had over 20 lives. And wow. getting back to that person who I first saw working out across from me, he was a member of the cohort of seven. And that's why he was so unearthly familiar. I couldn't get over it. And so I got to meet everybody in this in this lifetime who was part of this group. Uh, so in this lifetime now in California, you have actually found the other six, because you said seven. this seven. I, I, yeah, the other seven. Two are a married couple in England. Okay. Who are still alive. One is from the desert where I live now, who I had an immediate powerful, powerful connection. So I think um, some families, nuclear families may have part of that. Mm -hmm. um, one of my best lives um, when I was a hung Hungarian nobleman was like my second richest life in the middle ages. But it was really to learn how to live in a very harmonious, loving family. Mm -hmm. And all the members, but one, we'd had in quite a few lives together. So we already mm -hmm. knew each other, uh, except for one brother who I became close to. Mm -hmm. And actually, I met him in, in this lifetime, and I uh, instant connection. And how, so, does, how does it feel when you are at the gym and you're with this person? And how did you find this married couple and this guy from the desert? Like, how did you know that? this was someone that you had known in a past life? Well, that really came to light when I started to recover my past lives on March 14, 71. So uh, often before that, I had some scars that even other people picked up. I used to go to lunch with a group of fellow meditators and they would call me the Englishman. They thought I was just like almost more English than American. Hmm. Well, when I recovered my past lives, I recovered my last four ones first, and my last two, I was English. Mm. So that very strongly came through. But before that, it's just that they're very familiar, but basically we're shrouded, we don't know. See, the 
creation or the existence couldn't continue if everybody had full memory of what they had done and what had been done to them. Because first of all, they'd recover all the suffering they'd gone through. Mm -hmm. I mean, I recovered for the lives I write about were when I was a slave. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, in, on earth, I've, I've been like a slave 12 times. Mm -hmm. um, and that came about, I wasn't looking for that, but that was like a visual trigger. I have seen the preview of 12 Years a Slave and I thought, well, this is a great, important movie. I've got to see it and I was planning to. And then the commercial came on for it. And all of a sudden, consciously, I was catapulted into a specific life when I was a slave and taken when I was pretty old, when I was 21, when I had just left home for less than a year and I was tasting my freedom. And that was a very bitter life as a slave. Mm, okay, got it. So what what happens to you is this past life exploration kind of happens like there's this just felt, it's either consciousness just takes you to these other past lives like it did in the movie, or there's just a sense of knowing like the gentleman in the gym or these two people in the desert or this guy in the desert or this English couple had you met them or did you seek them, like see them on a video? Oh, like, how did you know? Oh, I, I, I knew them. We were, we were actually on the same spiritual path. So I, I'd known them for decades, but not until I kind of recovered the cohort of seven, I started to ask, who are these people? You know, did they come through? I, I do this, what you might call intuitive sussing, where I kind of go into another space and I can access. So one way is by triggers. But I also, after a while of writing in my journal and taking down like the prominent details of recent lives, I kind of realized I could recover any life I wanted to. And I was sort of led by my higher consciousness. I was kind of recovering groups of seven lives that had a, a particular connection. Mm. What, I, what the book really shows is my spiritual evolution. I recovered a lot of very subtle spiritual experiences, which shows uh, a growth in consciousness, like an mm. appreciation of life, uh, an appreciation of soul. Okay, and, and let's actually talk about that in the next segment, just because I don't want to, I want, I think what we talked about in this segment, we've been talking to uh, Michael Goddard about his book, In Search of Lost Life, Desire, Some Scars, and the Evolution of a Mind and Soul. And we've been talking about, how he's known the various, um, how he's discovered his past lives. And in fact, a cohort in your case, a cohort. And then I think with a lot of other people as well, they have spiritual families that they travel around with. And so based on your investigation in this lifetime, you're able to recover a lot of those same people that you traveled with before in your prior lives. And in the next segment, I wanna talk a little bit about um, the evolution of your consciousness and what you found out. Um, thank you so much. Oh, you're most welcome, Sita.